Welcome to Bricker Hall, which originally was called the Administration Building. As you learned in the first section, University Hall was the only building on campus for many years, and many campus offices were naturally located there. These included those that handled administrative functions, such as the bursar's office, where students would pay tuition and other fees. By 1920, though, OSU student body numbered about 8,000, and the staff tasked with administering this enrollment grew too large to be housed in several rooms of University Hall. So the Board of Trustees agreed in 1921 to pay for a new administration building at a cost of about a half million dollars, and it opened in 1924. In addition to the offices serving students, the President's Office was located here on the second floor, as was the first faculty club on the third floor. When the faculty club moved out in 1940 to its own building across the Oval, the graduate school offices took its spot. The president's office has remained here ever since. Because many student services were located here, the building was a hub of activity at the beginning of each term. Remember, for many years, the technology did not exist to allow students to conduct their business with the university other than in person. The main floor was always crowded with people waiting their turn to get to the counter to pay their fees, and often the line snaked out the door and around the building's exterior. In the late 1960s, the building was a focal point for students for a far different reason. In the last few years of that decade, students began demanding university administrators take more action on some important issues, the number of African-American students on campus and the lack of services and class offerings for them, restrictions on women students that weren't equally applied to male students, the lack of childcare services for female employees and graduate students, a dearth of on-campus student housing, and even the rising cost of tuition, which had jumped by about 15% in two years, from $170 a quarter in 1968 to $200 in 1970. In addition, many students on Ohio State's campus, like other campuses around the nation, were protesting against the Vietnam War. It all came to a head in the spring of 1970 when demonstrators clashed with the members of the National Guard, the local police, and the Highway Patrol, whom the governor had dispatched to campus to keep order. On May 4, 1970, four students at Kent State University were shot and killed by National Guardsmen, whom the governor had ordered there as well. The next day, Ohio State President Navis Fawcett ordered campus closed for two weeks. When students returned, finals were held, students were allowed to take them past fail, and commencement was held. Then everyone went home for the summer. For the university, it was a wake-up call, and the administrators began to work with students on their demands. Fifty years later, there unfortunately still is much to be done in the areas of diversity and equity, but many significant advancements have been made. Even before the protests in the spring of 1970, the university had established the Office of Minority Affairs, which became the Office of Diversity and Inclusion. Later, both the Department of African American and African Studies and the Department of Women's Gender and Sexuality Studies were created, and a child care center on campus was established. One of the most important changes was to give students more of a voice in the administration of university affairs. Student representatives now sit on University Senate, which makes policy recommendations to the university administration, and two student members sit on the Board of Trustees as well. The building was renamed in 1983 for alumnus John Bricker, former U.S. Senator and Ohio Governor, whose ties to OSU included his days here as a student, he received his undergraduate degree in 1916, and his 21-year tenure as a member of the Board of Trustees.